On the home front, one week after we reported on the appalling conditions for some outpatients at the Walter Reed Medical Center, tonight, another story of bureaucratic delays that may be preventing some wounded veterans home from Iraq and Afghanistan from getting the disability benefits they say they deserve. NBC's John Yang reports from Washington. Army Sergeant David Yancey was a gunner on a Humvee that hit a roadside bomb south of Baghdad in March 2005. The blast left him with limited use of his right arm and left leg and with brain trauma. For nearly two years, he's been at Walter Reed Army Medical Center. Now he's fighting a new battle for disability benefits. It's something I wasn't expecting after fighting for my country to come back and fight through the system. But it's something I did and uh, still here doing and uh, uh, not giving up. New reports appearing today in the Army Times and the Washington Post tell of scores of young Americans who've been badly injured in Afghanistan and Iraq and are now caught in frustrating snarls of red tape at home. This system is massively overtaxed right now. You're seeing soldiers remain at Walter Reed for 12, 18 months, as much as two years. Waiting for medical evaluation boards to determine their benefits. A finding of permanent disability means monthly checks, military health insurance, and other benefits for life. Army officials say the system is overwhelmed because more severely wounded soldiers are surviving than before. They say they're reviewing procedures to try to make them more efficient. But critics say the Army is also underestimating soldiers' disabilities. The Government Accountability Office found that in 2001, 642 soldiers were approved for permanent disability retirement. In 2005, with the Iraq war raging, the number was 209. The critics say Army evaluators are especially tough on PTSD, underrating the effects of post-traumatic stress disorder. That's deeply concerning to uh, uh, the soldiers who are facing, you know, severe anxiety as a result of their service in uh, Iraq and Afghanistan. Yancey still lives in outpatient housing on the Walter Reed campus. A lot of good treatment going on as far as the hospital is concerned. Uh, as far as the medical stuff is, uh, the process here uh, still needs some attention. Attention that the Pentagon is pledging to give those who've given so much for their country. John Yang, NBC News, Washington. As we mentioned, word of these problems comes just one week after we broke the news about trouble at the Walter Reed Medical Center. As the Washington Post Dan, a priest first reported here last Saturday, some wounded veterans there were living in deplorable conditions at one outpatient center known as Building 18. Since that report, it's been a week of hurried repair work, painting, and damage control. Even the defense secretary showed up for a first-hand look. We've asked Dana Priest back tonight for an update, and she joins us from our Washington newsroom. Dana, your report generated incredible response on a number of levels. But first, have they fixed all the problems at Building 18? Not all of them. They've done the easy fixes. They've disinfected the walls, taken, scraped off the mold, put up drywall. They put up fresh paint, taken out some of the carpeting. They fixed the broken elevator. They're still working on a security door and other things that uh, will take a little longer. So they have made some repairs. So what do you make of the government's quick response here? Well, the Army and the administration really face an uproar from the public. They received thousands of letters and emails from around the country, and there was a sort of rebellion uh, growing within their own ranks. Uh, retired generals and veterans groups, traditional supporters were clamoring for action. So on Thursday, uh, you saw the vice um, chief of the Army, Cody, send out a worldwide message to all generals. In it, he admitted a breakdown in leadership and said that he had been absolutely disappointed, were, her, were his words, and totally surprised by the conditions of Building 18. Then the Senate Armed Services Committee is holding a hearing on March 6th, which means it could turn into a political tool for the Democrats to show that the administration was not even ready for the wounded. Uh, Secretary Gates appointed a bipartisan review panel that will look at Walter Reed and also the nearby Bethesda Naval Hospital. What does all this mean for wounded veterans and the care they receive now? Well, first, I think their grievances will finally be heard. And, and you know, probably not just at Walter Reed. Uh, Walter Reed has about 25% of the outpatients recuperating from war wounds in uh, Iraq and Afghanistan, but probably elsewhere. And then soldiers should expect eventually a simpler and more respectful bureaucracy to deal with during their recovery. 
Soldiers and Marines, I think, will also expect a fair evaluation of their injuries and a fair rating for their health insurance when they leave the Army. And I think, finally, they will be able to go home sooner when these things get fixed. The Washington Post, Dana Priest. Dana, thank you very much. Thank you.